Good morning, God's people. Um, I'm actually, this is not the prayer appeal. And you all know I generally do a, a inspiration most of the time daily. And I haven't done one in a couple of days because the Lord has not impressed upon me to do one. And I don't do anything that he hasn't told me to do. Uh, at least I try not to. Uh, but this morning, over and over and over again, uh, the Lord and I have been talking. That's the first thing I do when I get up. We start chatting. And um, then I go and make coffee. And then we spend our time together, which I absolutely uh, love that time in the morning where we, you know, I study and I pray and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't get up, do the prayer appeal, uh, and make you all my first um, connection with God. I've already had some time with him to even kind of know how he wants me to focus the prayer appeal for the day. But in any event, this morning, the things that he had been saying, even while I was studying something else, and I kept having to stop and just listen uh, because he kept talking to me about different aspects of connection and rhythm. And as far as the rhythm is concerned, uh, one thing that uh, he was saying, he was showing me was you know, I, I operate in rhythms, which is just the way uh, I, I deal. Uh, but what I mean by that is, I'm, I'm in my bedroom. What what I mean by that is, um, everything I do, I do kind of on the rhythm. Um, I, how I spend money, how I think about money, how I handle money is a rhythm to it. Um, how um, I deal with people, how I speak, there's a rhythm to it, there's a cadence to it. Um, how my relationship with God has a rhythm. My day-to-day -day routine has a rhythm. Um, and even the, the things that I do as far as hearing and obeying, there's a rhythm to it, and there's a rhyme, and there's a reason. And we all operate on rhythms. And one thing he was telling me today was one of the reasons why I get so frustrated with people who are routinely late for things is because they operate on their own rhythm, uh, which generally is selfish and self-centered. Um, and it starves out the life and the spirit of God, which then makes your flow a little off. Um, and it causes disruption and distraction to the lives of other people. Um, and you're the only one that really cares about what you're doing and how you're doing it uh, when you are routinely. Now, everybody runs late every now and then. But for me, that's an opportunity to, again, recognize there's something a little off in that area if my rhythm is off. So one thing I want to highlight to you today is, as far as rhythm is concerned, to allow yourself to recognize that you have a rhythm, that you operate and flow uh, in a rhythm and in a cadence, that you talk in a cadence, that you talk um, in a, uh, in a way or in a style that does have a rhythm and a flow. You spend money. Again, everything you do that has a rhythm. And make sure that that rhythm is aligned uh, and is in step with God's rhythm for you. Um, because we all have an individual flow. We all have an individual rhythm and a style and a dance, as it were. If you think about it like that, a timing uh, that God moves you in that causes you to stay in step with him and stay in flow with him. That's thing number one. Second thing is... Um, about us uh, staying connected. I was uh, listening to a Periscope this morning, and um, as I was getting ready, trying to stay in, stay in my rhythm and stay in the flow, uh, so because it's a bunch of stuff that I need to do before I even get to work. Um, and in order to stay in the flow as well as stay connected uh, to the Spirit of God, I said, "Okay, you know, I don't really like to have television on at all for the most part, but you know, I, I need I need some type of stimuli to keep my brain um, moving." And so I usually turn on some worship music or uh, something like that, something um, that keeps me in the right mentality. And um, this morning I had it on and the person who was periscoping really, really good what, what, what God was feeding them and uh, they were saying and everything. And then they stopped and said, hold on. I got to get my cord to my uh, my device because I'm getting ready to cut off on you. And uh, that was one of the things I had said before uh, that the Spirit of the Lord had told me to say to you all is to make sure you stay connected. Because truly and indeed, we see that over and over again, that if we live a life of pouring out, if we live a life um, where we are, our gifts and our callings are active and moving and flowing, that we always are uh, in a position where we can't afford to get disconnected. That we can't afford to run low or run dry because just when you need a little more, there's none available because you have disconnected from the source. So, you know, in this season, again, I say, well, we are fasting uh, and some of us are 
a fasting from different things and on multiple levels. This is not just for this season. This is not just for this time. Make sure that you continually stay in a position where your heart is inclined to hear what the Lord is saying. And don't do it just because it's that time of year. And don't do it just because uh, it, that's what your church is doing or that's what you've been instructed to do. But allow the Spirit of God to teach and train you uh, different levels of connection and different levels of ways to stay connected with Him so that you can grow from glory to glory and uh, grow from dimension to dimension because if uh, we are going to live lives poured out and live overflowing lives, we have to make sure that we stay in a position where we are full because if we get low, you're not pouring out anything and you're not overflowing anything because you yourself need to be poured into. You yourself need to be charged and built up. So continue to allow, again, the Spirit of the Lord to make uh, you aware of what He wants you to do and how He wants you to do it, how He uh, uh, will allow you to be uh, connected to Him in, in fasting and in prayer um, in every aspect of living because that is how you live a continual life being poured out. Otherwise, you will indeed get to get to places and get to times uh, where you are depleted and there's a need that, that God has uh, ordained and invested in you, something where there's a supply and there's you to, you to be a resource. There's something else I say very regularly is don't always be in a position where you are looking for an open door. Be in a position where God can make you the open door. Be the person that God has called you to be. And in so doing, you should be one that uh, God is causing to, uh, to, to be provision. That God is causing you to be access. That God is causing uh, your favor to overlap. And bring supply and bring bring aid and ease to somebody else's life and existence because we tend to live in a, a, a position of mental and spiritual depravity and poverty where we're always looking to acquire and be built up, but we don't stay in a position where we can uh, be uh, in such a way that we are living in the overflow, continual overflow, and not just momentarily where we're looking for seasons of favor. But that's not what the Lord is saying. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna walk into my office because that was something I was reading this morning, or studying, I should say, this morning. And I want to read it to you because I, it just made me laugh. Um, it was Ephesians 1 and 3 through uh, 6. And it says, um, praise the... Let me read it in King James because it's a little different in the other version. It says, Ephesians 1 and 3, Blessed be the God and our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places with Christ. First and foremost, he's already blessed us with everything that we need um, from himself through Jesus Christ. Um, and that's, first of all, first and foremost, Everything we need, we already have. He's put on the inside of us. We just have to, again, stay connected and stay in a place where we stay in the rhythm and in the flow of what he's doing and where he's taking us. Um, and that will keep us in a place where we don't run dry and where we're not depleted in any manner or in any sense. Uh, keep reading according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and glory of his grace, where he hath, hath made us accepted in the beloved. And one of the things when I started looking up the different words and studying um, the aspects of scripture that I saw was um, the word... Um, uh, uh, where he has graced, where was the part that he has in verse six? There is grace wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. When you break that down, basically what it's saying is, in in Jesus he has given us, he has highly favored us and greatly loved us. Um, and so we we still have these mentalities where you know favor is temporary and fa favor is seasonal. But what he is continually and constantly unveiling and teaching us is, you know, his, his the, uh, Psalms it talks about his his anger is for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. If we get into a place and into a mindset and a mentality that we are not uh, living a works relationship, uh, we we don't have to act right, and so God blesses us, so we do step one, two, three, four, five, and the the equation at the end of the equation we have success but we already have everything that we need and it is he's predestined predestined us and even when i was looking that up this morning it was basically talking about how uh the predestination of uh of us in christ basically he's already 
set the standard for us, set, set the limitations where there really is none of who we are and how we will be and what we will obtain and obtain in him. And what he has given us is no ceiling. We can go as high, we can uh, uh, we can dream as big, and, and what he does with our even the limitations of our mindsets is he says, again, he will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all the power, uh, uh, above all we can ask for things according to the power that work is on the inside of us. So we got to get to a point where we again stay in the rhythm and in the flow because that's the conditional piece of it it's not that it's a seasonal thing it's not that it's a temporary thing what it is is we have to be in the right places in the right mindsets of receiving because you can have uh, uh everything that you need and not know that you have it and not get what you need because your expectation your mentality is not coinciding with what the environment and what what the um the desire is it's the same way as if i give you a black car and tell you go and do whatever you need to do and you go um and you say well i can only do this i can only do that i can only do the other because you don't understand what a black car really is and the that there is is again it's limitless you can do whatever you need to do and because of the mere uh of visual uh um uh the, the the visual uh, meaning or the understanding to other to other people in other environments of it, they know, oh, okay, give her what she wants because if she possesses this, if she has this black card, then she has free reign to do whatever she wants to do. I don't, you know, if I decide, okay, I'm going to put my black card uh, in, in motion and I'm going to buy a home. If I say, well, okay, I can only spend $100,000 um because again, I don't know what this black card really affords me. Then, when I go to a a, um, a realtor or to a, a place that I'm trying to, to purchase through, then they're saying they know. Okay, she don't need a pre approval. Give her what she wants because there's limitless access and there's limitless supply because of what you possess. It's the same thing in the spirit. If you don't know that there is limitless supply, if you don't know what you are really have really been afforded through a life with Jesus Christ and through a relationship relationship with Jesus Christ and you put these limitations on it because you don't stay connected and because you don't stay in the rhythm and in the flow of the anointing and of the glory of God and you are limiting your own life you're limiting your own success you're limiting your own future you're limiting your own resources because you think you can only do this and you're not doing it because again it's what is going into you and what has already been invested in you that is the supplier it is the spirit of God the spirit of God is in is the life of God. And so if the life of God is active and being released from the inside of you, then that means that you are limitless. You are without boundaries. That's one of the names of God. You know, we went through in um, our women's group, I think it was last year, the names of God. And uh, one of his names, I want to say it is... Uh, It'll come to me in a minute because I'm trying to draw from it. That's the reason why it has escaped me. But it'll come back in a second. But one of his names means limitless, without boundaries. Uh, um, uh, he makes he makes decisions by his own volition, and uh, you know he, he he doesn't have any 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 barriers or borders or boundaries except those that he has created unto himself. And so again, if the limitless, magnificent, boundless God who supplies himself and upholds his, his own word by the power of his own might is living on the inside of you, then that means that you are limitless, that you are boundless, that you are have unlimited supply and unlimited resources. Then why then do you limit yourself? Because then that would mean that would be an indicator right there that either your rhythm is off and you are out of step and your cadence is off and you're coming showing up a little late because you're into you and not into him. And if you miss that part, go to the beginning of this periscope and that'll be the explanation. But otherwise, that also would, would be an indicator that either your cadence is off, your rhythm is off, you're out of step with the spirit of God, or you unhooked, you unplugged. And it's time to get plugged back in so you can get filled to overflow and you can stay plugged in. Don't disconnect at all. For any reason, don't say, okay, I'm full, I got all I need, I can go, I, I'm straight now. Because again, if you're ever being poured out, you're ever then, thank you, El Shaddai, uh, uh, if you're ever being poured out and you're ever uh, uh, releasing, then you need to make sure you stay plugged in. It's the same thing with this phone. Since I've been doing this Periscope, usually I can you know, go a whole day without having to recharge my phone because I don't use it except for, for work and ministry stuff. So unless somebody calls me from for, for an appointment or something like that, then 
I don't really use a phone. But uh, uh, since I've been periscoping, it takes a lot of charge. It takes a lot of power out of my device. Same thing. If you are using what God has placed on the inside of you often, every day, then you need to stay incredibly charged. You need to stay hooked up to the source. Do not disconnect. Otherwise, you will be weary. Otherwise, you will uh, uh, not be as effective as God intended you to be. One of the things that uh, I do, y'all know if y'all know me. Y'all know I, I, I do all things beauty. That's my business. That's my livelihood. And um, with, I don't just do nails and feed and things like that. I do makeup. I do skincare. And one of the aspects uh, in the classes that I teach, um, I go through an example of why exfoliation is important and a necessary part of your uh, skincare routine, especially as you age. And what I do is I do a demonstration on the back of your hand. And I take an exfoliant and I use it on the back of your hand and then use... Um, Rinse it off and then use a um, a moisturizer on top. Then I take your other hand that has not been exfoliated and I just put lotion on that. And I show you the difference of the absorption, the, the time and the lack of absorption in the one that hasn't been exfoliated. Because what happens is there's a layer of skin, there's a layer of dead skin that sits on top of your skin until it is sloughed off naturally or sloughed off manually with a little assistance. And when it's gone, the, the whatever you put on top of it is able to penetrate with ease rather than sitting on top of your skin. So what we usually do uh, naturally is we go ahead and we put our moisturizers on and we don't see, you know, the moisturizing that we need because it's like, okay, you know, all my skin is just drinking this up. Probably not. What probably needs to happen is that you need to take that dead stuff off so that the, the penetration can come to what you're actually putting in. So we need to do some spiritual sloughing of some death and some dead things and some things that are not that are inoperable and that are unnecessary and do some spiritual exfoliation and allow God to the, the spirit of God, the presence of God, the power of God, the life of God to penetrate into the places that there was something, some type of barrier of death blocking that uh, flow and that penetration. And you can only do that when you're connected. You can only do that when you are in a position that you can receive again. That's why you have to do some spiritual exfoliation. I e prayer, i.e. fasting. There's things that God is calling for you to do that may uh, cause that that may be a little abrasive and may seem harsh to your flesh, but it's the opportunity for some death, for some sloughing to come about even into the areas of your soul, in the areas of your body, to the areas of your very life, to the areas of your spirit man, so that what he is allowing to flow to you can penetrate even in the way that it is most potent. Otherwise, you are wasting time you are wasting money, you are wasting energy, and the quality of what God is investing and bringing to you is never really being utilized. Amen? So, again, if you use a $100 uh, a moisturizing cream, but you got all of this, again, dead skin going on, and sometimes you'll see people with patches and things like that on their face. It's dead skin nine times out of ten. Uh, or hyperpigmentation, one or the other. But in any event, most of the time, it's dead skin. And so when you exfoliate, you get a whole new, sometimes, uh, most of the time, you get a whole new coloring, because what was under there that was healthy has been hidden, because something lifeless has been sitting on you has been living on you it hasn't been access giving you uh, the ability to receive what is trying to get to you to penetrate to bring life and vitality to you because it's been death sitting on you and naturally speaking when you're young it happens it, it, it you know it sloughs itself it, it, it causes itself to be able to re rejuvenate but once you get to a certain age your your uh, self sloughing uh, ability slow down so the older you are the more you have have to exfoliate same thing same thing and the reason it is in the spirit and in the soul aspect the aspect of our soul because the older we are the more access we have to different areas of uh, uh infiltration the more we have access to being contaminated because we see things we go into environments you know all of that other kind of stuff and we're we don't have the the level of protection that we have when we're children when we're children it's our parents job to be able to shield us from certain environments that are not healthy and certain conditions but when you're an adult, with the exception of God and your spouse, you on your own. So you have to more regularly come into a place where you spiritually exfoliate, where you, uh, are, again, when you are living hooked up, you allow God to say, okay, it's time for us to hit the reset button. Okay.
okay, it's time for you to back up from this, that, or the other because we need some time together. I want to talk to you about something. I want to show you something that uh, is attempting to contaminate your soul because I'm trying to get something to you and I can't get through this thing. So when God allows you the opportunity to um, see yourself in him by his own mirror because that's how we measure ourselves and we really can see truth and see clearly is again by looking at Jesus and comparing ourselves to the life of Christ, then we can recognize and understand in those instances that that's an opportunity to do some spiritual exfoliation. Amen. So I'm going to finish getting dressed. Um, and then I'll come back and do the prayer appeal. Thank you all for joining me. I pray that this blessed you. Uh, the other thing before I go, one other thing that just broke my heart this morning before uh, I was, again, I was talking to the Lord about some stuff and, um, he was, he was telling me that, you know, there are a lot of uh, gifts and there are a lot of uh, uh, people who are greatly empowered and greatly anointed and people who really are pursuing the heart of God and the way of God to be who he has called them to be that have been um, running into barriers and they are not uh, just spiritual barriers, uh, demonically spiritual barriers, um, but natural barriers, the barriers of people. And it's been because, you know, people have been intimidated by what you have and who you know God has called you to be and they are afraid that you are going to overtake who they are in their position and um move them out of the way and make them obsolete and you know he was talking to me about some things that and it just broke my heart again and again because all I kept saying was father help your people father help your people father help your people to be able to understand that we are one body fitly joined so one of the things that I want want to encourage you on today is when as that is happening if that is happening to you to not be weary and well doing for due, due season you will reap if you faint not that's the first thing but second of all to make sure first and foremost that you stay connected to the source because the attempt in this season is to deplete you of um of your of your giftings of your power and we know that the giftings and the callings come without repentance but to render you inoperable through frustration to throw your hands up and say bump this i ain't got to be bothered with this you know and just kind of walk away from the the place that god has commanded you to be uh because he wants your gift operational in that place um and in this and in this time and in this season but also to be in a position uh where you are continuing to speak the words of life over leadership continue to speak the the words of life of people in leadership positions um and who are seated in the places uh, where the barriers are uh, uh, and where uh, the opposition is coming from because there's aspects of their heart that God wants to deal with and um, he He is going to uh, increase you and um, bring great and lasting reward to you as you intercede on their behalf uh, because it, it really is not only a diabolical attempt on the life of the person who is feeling denied but it's a diabolical and satanic attempt on the lives of those who are denying um, to be able to stalemate them because the reason why they need to receive the new uh, giftings is because God wants them to be able to increase themselves um, but because they are so busy trying to hold fast in where they feel they are that they feel like you know they might be moved out of they are damning themselves up and they're not allowing them their own selves to receive the promotion that God is trying to give them so you know continue to pray for them 